Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with the Actually Tiny House Project where we are exploring smart, simple, sustainable tiny house design and giving you some building tips along the way. So what we're doing here on the tiny house today is we just finished a reframe of this entire wall here, which means that this whole wall was finished, it had a window, it had siding, and for a variety of reasons that I'll talk about later, we decided that we needed to make a change. So we tore everything off, we reframed it, and now we're getting ready to put it all back together. Now, the silver lining of this whole fiasco is it gives me an opportunity to demonstrate how to do a rain screen siding buildup. And if you're not familiar with rain screen siding, what it is is basically just an extra layer of space that's created by a small plywood batten that sits on top of your house wrap that your siding attaches to. And what this does is it lets your siding ventilate better from the backside. It also lets water drain out a lot easier. So it's basically an extra layer of protection and ventilation, which translates to more longevity for your building. It's also nice because it's really easily disassemblable. I mean, you don't have to go all the way back to this stage, but you can take it apart piece by piece if you need to make a change or replace a chunk of your siding, which is really nice not to have to go all the way down to the bare building if you need to just change a little piece of siding out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over the whole process step by step. We're gonna cover putting the house wrap on, putting any blocking on for penetrations. We're gonna put the window in, we're gonna flash it off, and then hopefully this will give you a lot of insight into all the little details in one place where you can just reference this. So when you're ready to do all these steps, you can just watch this video and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we just put the house wrap back on the front face here. And because this is a rain screen detail, you don't have to use the wrinkly drain wrap. We're just using the flat Tyvek here. And normally you'd wanna wrap this stuff all the way around the house, but because this is a remodel right here, we ended up taking the old Tyvek and cutting it so there would be a six inch overlap with the new Tyvek. And then we're taping the seam with this Tyvek tape here. And I'm just gonna take this and tape straight down the seam. So for tacking up my house wrap, I usually start with a staple gun, but I try not to staple very much because anytime you put a staple through Tyvek, you have to come back and cover it with a little piece of tape. What you actually wanna use for putting your Tyvek onto your tiny house is these little guys right here. And what these are is cap nails. And a cap nail is a little ring shank nail with a plastic collar, goes through the Tyvek and holds it on even if you have gusty winds. And I have to be honest, these really annoyed me at first, but after working with them a little bit, I'm totally sold on these. These are a big improvement over staples and they give you a much more weather tight envelope. Now, before you go nailing on your cap nails, you need to think about a couple things. You need to think about where your studs are because that's where your rain screens are gonna be mounted. And you don't want cap nails underneath your rain screens. So just make sure Sure you're not putting cap nails where your studs are on the inside of the wall and also you want to think about your siding vent which is just kind of a narrow vented plastic product that goes at the bottom of the wall and at the top of the wall and it allows your wall to vent but doesn't allow insects to create homes up behind your siding so i usually don't put my cap nails within four inches of the top and the bottom of the wall now once you're missing all those things Next, you can go ahead and just nail these on. And the way that I do this is just with these hand-nailed cap nails. There are pneumatic nailers and hammer tacker style cap nailers. The hammer tacker style cap nailers just don't work very well and the pneumatic nailers are super expensive. So for a tiny house, what makes sense just to get yourself a box of these hand nail cap nails. Now you wanna nail these on roughly every 16 inches over the entire field of the wall. And I'm gonna put on an extra one right now just to show you how I nail these up. What I do is I put it in my fingers like this, and then I put it down like this, and then I just pound just like that right into my hand. And then I take my hand out of the way and finish it off. And when you first start doing this, you're gonna get a little bit frustrated, but after you do a couple, they should go in pretty easily. So next thing I'm gonna do is cut out my window opening. Pretty simple here, just get a utility knife, slide it right along the plywood opening. Next thing I do is come to the top of the window here, and I'm gonna make a diagonal cut from the corner of the window up at about a 45 degree angle and about eight inches here. So, and then once you've got it cut, you can go ahead and just take a little piece of tape. Don't use the Tyvek tape for this. Use like masking tape. And you can go ahead and just tape this up and out of the way. So next thing I'm gonna do is come in here with my utility knife 
and I'm gonna cut the Tyvek back one inch from the edge of the window. I trust myself doing this by eye. You might wanna use a ruler while you're doing this. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and chase this with Tyvek tape, and this is gonna tape the Tyvek firmly down to the plywood sheathing, which creates a really good air seal. So next we're gonna start flashing the window here, and this starts with window corners or flex wrap. And what this is, is just a little plastic corner here that fits in like this, and then you're gonna cover this with your flashing tape on the bottom first and on the sides second. Now there's an alternate product out there called Flex Wrap that you can flex around this corner and it's meant to replace these, but in my experience, if you haven't worked with that stuff a lot, which I haven't, it can be really frustrating to use and it's also really expensive. So we're gonna stick with these guys for right now and I'm gonna go ahead and put the flashing on. Okay, so just a little tip in putting these guys in here. It's really helpful to tape these up because once you peel the tape off the back of your flashing, it's gonna be really sticky. And if you're trying to deal with corners sliding all over the place, it's gonna be really frustrating. Now, something that's helpful here is just to mark the back edge of the sill at the corner of the corner here. So when you drop your flashing tape in, it's gonna stick in the right spot and it'll be nice and lined up with the back of the sill. So I've got these taped in place and I've cut some nine inch wide flashing tape here about a half inch narrower than this overall width here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off just like this. This stuff is super sticky, so you need to be careful. So I'm gonna stick this on right here at the mark and I'm just gonna carefully bring it across the bottom of the sill here all the way down to the mark on the other side. And then once I've got it on there, go ahead and flatten it down. The right tool for putting this stuff on is a J roller, but most people with tiny houses are not gonna have one of those. And we're gonna come down to the front here and we're gonna wrap it over the front of the Tyvek in the corners. So before we install the window, let's just talk about the opening really quick. Now, obviously your sill should be level. So when you're framing your tiny house, make sure that everything's nice and level. So your sill ends up nice and level as well. The sides of the opening actually don't matter that much because there's so much play in the rough opening. It doesn't end up being an issue. The rough opening for a window is typically a half inch taller and a half inch wider than the window itself. Although you do want to follow the instructions from the manufacturer for your particular window. And finally, the window sill itself should slope at about six degree angle. So if any water does get behind your window, it's going to come out the front here instead of leaking back into your house or rotting out your sill. Now, because of this six degree angle here, you are gonna have to build up underneath the window with shims. And the shims you wanna use for this are the plastic composite kind. There's a bunch of different brands. On a six degree sill, I'm usually stacking two of these. And for a window like this, I'm typically just putting one, two, and three. For anything wider than a 30 inch window, you'd wanna go more like five. And you're gonna to wanna to put these in just by nailing them in with some really tiny nails. All right, so before I set the window in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bead of sealant up one side of the window, across the top, and then down the other side, but I'm not gonna do the bottom here. The sealant I'm using here is Vulcum. There's other options for sealing a window. This is just what I like to use. So we're just gonna go Start right here, just a little bit above the corner. I'm gonna go right on top of the window corner, up onto the tape here. And we're just gonna make a nice fat bead of sealant. Now what this does is it not only seals the window against air leaks around the flange, but it also helps to glue the flange to the building. Now the reason we don't do the bottom at the very bottom down here is because if any moisture does get behind your um, flashing elements here, you want it to be able to leak out over this flashing and then drain down the front of the building. So the window that we're gonna be installing is a Marvin Integrity Line Wood Ultrax window. And I am a huge fan of this particular window, so I just wanna take a minute to talk about it. What this is is a fiberglass window on the outside and a wood window on the inside. And something like this is going to be a lot more energy efficient, a lot stronger, a lot more reliable, and it's gonna have a lot longer lifespan than a vinyl window. Now, the downside is that this costs about twice as much as a vinyl window, and I can see how that could be a huge issue if you're thinking about putting windows in a 
full-size house. But honestly, in a tiny house, the overall cost difference between something like this and vinyl windows isn't that much. So I would say if you can possibly afford it, definitely go with fiberglass windows. And once again, this is a Marvin Integrity window. I don't have any relationship with them as a company. I just think this is an awesome window. Now, if you do decide to go with this particular window, you need to be aware that these have fold out flanges, which are a little bit different than the fixed flanges that you see on normal windows. And these ride in little channels that can slide up and down. So when you're installing this, you have to make sure that this side flange is slid all the way up to the top flange before you screw it into the wall. Now, this particular window has an integrated cap flashing on the top of it, which takes the place of a normal cap flashing and allows any water that runs down on the top of the window to be pushed out over the front of the window. Now, if this were going to be installed with trim that was very shallow, that was gonna be level with the front face of the window here, I would probably add a second normal metal cap flashing to the top of this because I just don't trust that this little plastic lip here isn't gonna degrade with ultraviolet radiation over time. However, but because we're gonna be installing a really deep trim detail over this, this is almost completely concealed from the weather and the sun. So I feel just fine letting this integrated cap flashing be the cap flash for the top of this window. All right, so let's go ahead and install this window here. We're gonna go ahead and lift it up into the opening and put the bottom of it in first. And then we're just gonna rock this back into the opening. All right, so now that I've got the window in place and it's centered from side to side at the bottom on the sill here, next thing we're gonna do is screw off the top two corners. You wanna go ahead and measure corner to corner here on the outside, do the same thing on the inside, and then get yourself a level and check the level of the sides of your window, the bottom of your window. Just do everything you possibly can to make sure everything is perfectly square. And then you can go ahead and take a screw and screw in two bottom corners of the flange down here. Now, some people will use roofing nails for this, but I like to use really flat headed screws like this because that way if I make a mistake, I can back these out. So now that I've got all four screws in here and I've checked to make sure that my window is dead level, dead square, and that it operates cleanly and has even reveals all the way around the window on the inside, Next thing I'm gonna do is nail off the rest of my flange. Now, you don't need to put nails in every single one of the nail flange holes. I'm gonna go every other hole here down the side and across the top. Now, on the bottom, it is okay to put some nails or screws in the fin, but you never wanna put any sealant down there because once again, you wanna make sure that if any water gets, does get down there, it can drain down and out the front of the building. Now, before I put the flashing tape down the sides here, I'm gonna put on one more thing that is specific to these folding flange Marvin windows, and that is these little sticky corner gaskets here. So these just peel off a of backing, and then they go right on the corner here, and you wanna lap these a little bit up onto the actual now, before I put the flashing tape down the sides here, I've got to put on this little gasket, which is specific to this folding flange window. So normal windows, it's just gonna come all the way around and you just put your flashing tape over. But these Marvin windows, you have to put this little sticky gasket on. So how this guy attaches is you just put it onto the window here and you wanna lap it just a little bit onto the window itself and then just stick it really tightly down to the flashing and the flange nice and tight. And I do this at all four corners. Up at the top, I actually like to back this up with a little bit of caulking as well because I feel like that's a weak spot in this particular window. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the flashing tape down either side of the window here. I usually cut my six inch wide flashing tape three inches longer on the top of the window and six inches longer on the bottom here. And the way that I like to attach this is really specific because if you just go ahead and peel this off and try to stick it on, it's gonna be a total mess. This stuff is super sticky and you gotta be real careful while you're putting it on. So what I do is I'll start the back of it here and I'll peel it down a little bit. I'll stick it on right flush with the edge of the window frame, about three inches above. And then when I get down to the window frame, I go ahead and tack the edge of this right to the outside of this window frame corner and I tack the opposite edge out to here. And I just work my way down the window really carefully, peeling the backing as I go, just tacking it lightly to the outside edge of the window frame every 12 inches or so. And then when I'm done, 
I go back and I kind of slide my hand down really carefully and flatten this out. And then as I get towards the corner here, what I do is I get my speed square out and I kind of just push it down and that causes it to fall off that outside corner and into this corner right here. And when you're done, it should lap about a quarter of an inch up onto the window frame. And that's gonna give you a really nice tight seal. Now, just to show you that technique again, I've got my speed square here and I've got my flashing tape on and I tacked it very lightly from here out to the tip of the window right here. And then I can take my speed square and just slide it down this corner and kind of manage the flashing with my hand. And it just really helps to set it in there in a nice clean way. You can see how that makes just a really nice crisp lap up onto the window. Okay, last step here on the window is to put the flashing across the top here. I usually cut my flashing one or two inches wider than the outside of my side flashing tapes. This is just a piece of six inch flashing and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring it to the top of the window here, bring it to the outside of my other flashing and just really carefully coming across the top here and out to the other side. And then I'm just gonna press this down nice and tight. Like I said before, a J roller is really what you want because these are pressure sensitive adhesives, but you're probably not gonna buy a J roller for a tiny house. So just push it on there really hard. Now, last thing you need to do here is you're gonna go ahead and fold this flap down just like this. And then you can just take your Tyvek tape tape down this seam right here, and now everything's buttoned up nice and tight and sealed. Now, something I wanna mention one more time here is the integrated cap flashing that comes with this window. It's just a little piece of plastic, comes out off the flange and over the top of the window. And in this application right here, where I've got a nice deep eave right here that's gonna protect it from ultraviolet radiation, and I have really deep trim details, I'm totally fine with just using that cap flashing. But if I was having this completely exposed to the sun and I was using a shallow trim detail, I would put an extra cap flashing in here. So how those work is you just go buy them from any lumber store, you get a flashing that's a little bit wider than your window and you tuck it up underneath the head flash and the Tyvek right here before you put either of these things down. So one last thing on your window flashing that you wanna be super mindful of is the top corner here where all of the flashing tapes and the Tyvek and the cap flash weave together because that corner is notorious for opening up a little bit and leaving a channel for water to make its way into the building. So typically at this point, what I do is just check to make sure all that stuff is folded down nice and tight. If you have to, you can just carefully nick the corners of it with a razor blade so it really lays flat there. And then I always back that up with a nice dab of seal up here to make sure that any water that comes in isn't going to make it into the top corner of the window. All right, so next thing we're going to do here is put on our rain screen siding battens. And what these are is just narrow strips of pressure treated plywood that is three eighths of an inch thick by two inches wide. And this just gets nailed on with two inch long galvanized ring nails. And you're going to nail this straight through the house wrap and the siding and into the studs underneath. Now, Obviously, you got to figure out where those studs are. And so a couple different ways you can approach that. You can just go on the inside, measure off the edge of your window for each stud. Make sure you subtract a quarter inch from those measurements because these are a little bit wider than the studs are. Or if a wall is really big and complicated, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just get a small drill bit and come to the inside of the wall and just hold a quarter inch piece of wood up against the stud and then drill right next to it through everything and come to the outside mark that with a little black marker and then cover it with a piece of Tyvek tape. It's kind of a cheating way to do it, but it works just fine and it makes sure that your battens are gonna be straight on the lines of your studs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a couple of these up, show you how this works. If you're putting on vertical siding, you wouldn't use these battens. What you would use is a different product called Corvent, which is a vented plastic siding product that I'm gonna show you once we put the rain screens on, and that only gets put on at the bottom and the top of this particular wall detail. So you wanna space your nails here between eight and 12 inches. You don't wanna cluster your nails too tightly because the tighter your nails are clustered, that's more nails that you're gonna be hitting when you're putting on your siding. 
Now, at the corners and at the window edges here, we actually butt the rain screen up against the trim. So most people would wrap a corner with trim like this. In this case, I just go with a single board sticking out because I like how it looks. But either way, you're gonna push your rain screen right up against there, and then you're gonna nail it off. So you wanna put your trim on the building, then you'll put your rain screen on. Now, when it comes to the windows over here, if you're doing a normal trim detail where you say you've got a flat two by four or a flat two by six and you're putting it up against the window like this, the sequence would be you would trim out your window first and then you would put your rain screens up against it like that on the outside of the trim. Now, we're not gonna be doing that in this case because I'm doing a floating trim detail where I have a really narrow but, but long trim that's gonna sit right on top of the rain screens. And I'm not gonna talk too much about that in this video because I made a whole separate video for that that you can check out. But I just wanted to make it clear why I'm doing it in this case, putting the rain screen right up against the window and why you might not want to if you're gonna go with a different type of trim detail. Just a really quick word here before I fire up this nail gun, you always wanna wear safety glasses if you're using a nail gun because what happens with these is these little plastic bits that hold the nails together shoot out of the side of the gun at really high speed, fast enough and hard enough to put your eye out. So never forget your safety glasses. So next thing we're gonna put on here is some siding vent to keep the bugs out of the top and the bottom of the wall, but to still allow the air channel to breathe. And there's a couple different ways you could do this. What some people do is they just get metal screen and they wrap it beneath the rain screen battens and back around on top of the rain screen battens. And I think that's a pretty good way to do it. I actually use this stuff, which is called core event because it's just super easy to work with. And what this is, is just a corrugated plastic here that has a little bit of a fuzzy barrier here to keep insects from crawling through. And the way we install this is we just go ahead and set it up at the bottom and the top of the wall, right between the battens. And then you can cut it with scissors pretty easily. Make sure the fuzzy side is down, put it right here. And then you just take your nail gun, nail it in a couple places, you can do the same thing at the top of the wall. So once you've got your trim in place, whether you're doing a normal trim buildup or something more creative like what I've got here, you're gonna wanna take your siding vent and put it a quarter inch below the bottom of your trim. And the reason for that is you need to leave a little space for the air to be able to vent out before it gets to the trim. So if you're doing vertical siding instead of horizontal siding, what you would do in that case is you wouldn't put the rain screen battens on at all. You would just get siding vent like this and you would space it up the wall at whatever spacing is recommended for that siding. So that is how you put up rain screens. Now, hopefully this video wasn't too long. I try to keep a balance between keeping everything as comprehensive as possible while still trying to keep it as short as possible. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to do both at the same time, but I really try to keep things as detailed as possible because in my experience on this tiny house and also just my experience as a builder in general, what's really gonna slow you down and cost you time and money is when you have to stop and research a specific detail, even if you already understand most of the process of how something goes together. So hopefully this gave you some good tips if you decide to do this on your house. If you like this video, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. Also, you can check us out online at actuallytiny.com where we've got a bunch more tiny house videos and a bunch of good tiny house resources as well. You can also find us on Instagram where we post a daily build blog of our project here, including time-lapse videos of everything that we do, including putting up this rain screen here behind me. So that's it for now. Take care. Be safe building your tiny house.